Hello, this is Kevin Lausch with the Unitarian Universalists of Transylvania County, and I'm here again with our Chalice Children's Book Reading for the week. And the theme for the month of April is Becoming. Becoming who you are meant to be, becoming something new, letting go of the old, and trying things out, and basically finding your passions and what you want to do with this wonderful life we have. And to explore all of that, we have the book, Becoming a Good Creature, written by Cy Montgomery and pictures by Rebecca Green. And if you don't know Cy Montgomery, she has written many, many wonderful books. She's a wildlife biologist and an author. And in this book, she takes the memoirs of her life and tells about how she's learned from animals all over the world. And through the book, we're going to learn really great lessons like respecting others, or finding good teachers, learning forgiveness, and let me find one more here, and trusting tomorrow. So let's look at the book and look for these lessons as she learns them from all these different animals from around the world. And then we'll talk a little bit about what we are becoming and what we might learn from the world too. Here we go. Becoming a Good Creature Words by Cy Montgomery, pictures by Rebecca Green. School is not the only place to find a teacher. Sometimes we meet teachers in the forest, or in the barn, or in the ocean, or right in our own house. Some of my teachers have been two legs, while others have had four legs or even eight. But all have taught me something important about how to be a good creature in the world. Find good teachers. When I was little, I wanted a dog. I wanted to run really fast and see in the dark. I wanted to understand the sounds of my neighborhood, both wild and tame. But no one could show me how until Molly. Molly was only a puppy when she came to live with us, but she was already gifted with special animal powers. So I watched her. I listened. And I learned that if we pay attention, the world outside beckons us. Even before I started school, Molly was my first teacher. Discover your passions. When I grew up, I hungered to learn about animals. In Australia, I met birds who stood almost as tall as I did. Emus can't fly, but they run like the wind. What were their lives like? I wanted to know. So I moved to a tent in the wild to find out. For many months, I followed three emus and watched them like I watched Molly. They showed me where they traveled and what they ate. And while I followed them, they also showed me my own path. I would go to the places where animals lived. Each would be a new teacher, and I would write their stories. Respect others. Next, I went to Africa to meet gorillas. I hiked in the mountains there for a long time. It was nothing like my home in New Hampshire. As I stopped to catch my breath, I saw a person running toward me. Why? Because a big gorilla was chasing him. But I didn't run. I crouched low and looked at the ground, as if bowing before a king. The gorilla stood, beat his chest, and let out a roar. And when he saw that I understood that he was boss, he turned and calmly led me back to meet his gorilla family. Ever since that day, I respected my animal hosts and their homes. Don't be afraid. In India, I met tigers. In Africa, lions. In the rivers of South America, I swam with piranhas and electric eels. In the ocean, I met sharks. None of them ever hurt me. Wait patiently. I traveled to Australia again, this time to meet a different bird. The cassowary, like the emu, is a tall bird who runs instead of flies. 
I was eager to meet one and spend a week trekking through the rainforest home. No cassowary. An hour before I had to leave, I went one more time to say goodbye to the beautiful, empty jungle. A cassowary stepped out from the trees before me. He was close enough for me to see his eyelashes. I was so glad that I had waited. Make your own family. At home, animals continued to teach me. My husband and I didn't plan on having babies, but soon a baby came to us, a baby pig. We named him Christopher Hogwood. Little girls and their mother moved in next door. They saw Chris in the backyard and came to visit every day. He was a very happy pig. We weren't all related, but Christopher showed us that it didn't matter. We became one big family, my husband, our border collie Tess, our hens, two little girls, and their mom. One very happy pig. See for yourself. I'd heard it all before. Hyenas were ugly. Hyenas are lazy. Hyenas are thieves. They steal from lions. Everyone said so. Even the Lion King. Then I visited a hyena den. The fluffy cubs wrestled like playing puppies. Mothers tenderly licked their babies. And they weren't stealing food from lions. More often, lions stole food from them. Hyenas reminded me that what everyone says is not always true. Love Little Lives I never give spiders much thought until I met one in South America who is almost as big as a chipmunk. She was a sleek black tarantula with toes tipped in pink, like she just had a fancy pedicure. She lived in a potted plant in a nature center. We learned that she was a gentle kind of tarantula who lived for 30 years. We named her Clarabelle and let her walk across our hands each night. We think she liked us. We sure liked her. Clarabelle showed us that little lives matter as much as big ones. Learn Forgiveness one Christmas morning, I found an intruder in our hen house, a white-coated weasel. Though tiny, weasels are fierce. They catch and eat animals much bigger than themselves. They even eat chickens. Towering above him, I looked into the weasel's black eyes. Fearlessly, the little weasel stared back. How brave he was, and how beautiful, in his snowy white coat. I was dazzled by his determination and couldn't be angry at his will to survive. Find common ground. Octavia had eight arms, three hearts, no bones. She lived in the water, I live on land. What could we possibly have in common? We both liked to play. As different as we were, we became friends. Trust tomorrow. Little girls next door moved away. Our pig grew old. Our dog grew old. I felt like everything was ending. Then one day I got a phone call from our veterinarian. He told me that a neighbor's border collie had just had pups. They were all valuable dogs with important work to do, herding sheep, cows, and pigs when they all grew up. All the babies already had farm families waiting for them. All but one. One puppy had a blind eye. Would I take him? Thurber taught me the best lesson of all. Even in the darkest of times, there may be a wonderful new teacher waiting for you, right around the corner. And then the author writes, 
to all the creatures who have been my teachers, wild and tame, named and unnamed, animal and human. Thank you for showing me a world more surprising, more alive, and far more glorious than I ever could have imagined. Signed, Cy Montgomery. The end. That was our book, Becoming a Good Creature by Cy Montgomery. And I hope you liked it. I certainly did. And isn't it interesting how she learned all these great lessons from animals all over the world, and they helped her become who she wanted to be, to find what she really liked, and to explore and to learn great lessons like respecting others, or waiting patiently, loving little lives, um, f finding um, the will to forgive. And I want to end our reading with repeating the very last thing in her book which is, To all the creatures who have been my teachers, wild and tame, named and unnamed, animal and human, thank you for showing me a world more surprising, more alive, and far more glorious than anything I have ever imagined. So think about this book and about what you might want to become, and all the lessons that might be out there in the natural world, or from the people around you that can help you be the best you that you can be. All right, that's our lesson. Please stay tuned to, um, to this place for Reverend Bob. He'll be coming up next with the service at 10 o'clock. Have a good day.